Let's look at how we can create a bullet solver setup from scratch and also how to spawn or emit rigid bodies. So let's go ahead and drop in a geometry node and the project files for the example scene that you saw in the beginning are available on Patreon. If you wanna grab those, you can just head on over there. But let's go ahead and create a circle. This is going to be our geometry that we're gonna spawn our points on that we're going to then use as the objects uh, to copy or the points to copy the objects to that we're going to be then using as our emission objects. So we'll set this to the ZX plane and let's move this up a little bit as well. Something like that should be good. And let's go ahead and drop down a pop net. This is what I'm gonna be using to spawn our points. Now you can do this a ton of different ways. So uh, if you have a different method that you prefer, go ahead and do that. There's all sorts of different ways to do this. And maybe I'll take a look at how we can do this with different types of setups in the future. Let me know if you're interested in that. But let's go ahead and jump into this pop net. And in here, we wanna to come to our source. We're gonna come over to our birth and let's change this to something lower, like 40. And if I click play, you can see we have a bunch of points being spawned onto our geometry over time. And they're staying on throughout the entirety of our duration of our, our animation here. So we can, if we wanted to set this so that they only spawn on one frame using the life expectancy, that just makes things a little bit more difficult. We only want them to stick around for one frame because we don't want to continuously emit from the points. We want them to just kind of move around and emit one object on a singular frame. So let's go ahead and just set something up in this just born group. We'll just call it just born should be good. And then we can jump on out of here and create a blast node. And in this group, we want to set this to the just born group and we want to set to delete non-selected. And that will make it so that we are just making the points uh, that we are spawning be what we're going to be using for the emission. So we'll only emit on those points and then they die the very next frame and the new ones are spawned. So let's go ahead and randomize the scale for this. So we'll do an attribute randomize. We'll set this to P scale and one dimensional. Let's make it like, I don't know, 0.2 to like 0.8, not 0.8 there, but 0.8 here. And then we can drop down a copy to points and we can set this to be whatever object we want. I'm just gonna use a rubber toy, for example, here. You can also set this to be a random rotation if you would like, but for this example, I'm just going to focus on the emission with some random velocity, which we will tackle here in just a moment. So if I go ahead and kind of scrub through here, we can see we got some rubber toys being spawned. I'm also going to just kind of scale these down a little bit and just make them a little bit smaller. And we got a bunch of rubatories being spawned in different points on our geometry. Now you also may want to fuse at a certain size so that you don't get objects kind of spawning inside of each other, but we'll worry about that later if we would need to. Let's go ahead and drop down an assemble node. This will be what we need to actually pack our geometry so that we can bring it into the RBD simulation. So we'll check this create packed primitives and now we are all set. Now, I, like I said, I do wanna create some random velocity to this. So let's go ahead and set up a random velocity. So attribute randomize. And in here, unlike other simulations where you would type in VEL for velocity, we're gonna set this just to V for velocity. And we can leave this pretty much the same. I'm gonna set the Y velocity to be something between one and six, and that should give us some randomness to that. I'm also gonna set down a null, and we'll just call this out spawner. And then we'll jump over here and we'll just drop down a dot net. 
And this is where we are going to be creating our bullet solver setup. So we'll jump in there and we'll drop down a bullet solver. We're also gonna want some gravity. So we'll drop down a gravity force. We'll go ahead and wire those up. And then we need to bring in our object. So we'll do RBD packed object, wire this in. And in here we wanna set the SOP path to be that spawner that we just set. Now we also do need to check this inherit velocity from point velocity because if we look back here and we check our geometry spreadsheet, we set up this random velocity here. Now if I jump back into the stop net, I go ahead and press play. You see we get some simulation going on with some random velocity. You see this one's going a lot higher, a lot faster than this one over here. But obviously we only have them being spawned on one frame, which is not what we want. And the reason for that is because in this RBD packed object, we have this creation frame set to a value of one. So it's just going to set on the first frame. So we want to actually delete this and we're going to set this to $FF. And now if I press play, you see we get a bunch of our little rubber toys being spawned here and being blown to bits. But we want to have a ground plane, so we could just set up just a grid here. We'll set the size to be 100 by 100. Should be good. We'll call a null or put a null down. Call this out ground. Or this could be just your collision object, whatever you want. And to bring in a collision object, we need a static object. We also need a merge. We're going to wire this in on the left side and then our, our simulation here on the right. Make sure that they're set up like that. And let's set the SOP path to be the ground plane. And if you don't actually want to see the ground plane, you can disable this display geometry, but we'll just leave it up for now and press play here. You can see that now we have our objects being blown to bits, falling all over the place, and they're hitting our ground plane. So that is kind of the basics of how we go about setting this type of a simulation up and creating a bullet solver set up from scratch with a collision object. You know, you can have multiple collision objects. Just make sure that they are set to the left of your solver here. And we can spawn our objects here with our pop net or whatever we want. If you want to set it up a different way, like I said, you can do that a multitude of different ways or a multitude of different objects. And if you wanted to do something like spheres, you can always change this. That way you don't have all those points being blown all over the place or all those pieces from the rubber toy. Press play, see if we get a bunch of balls being spawned kind of blown all over the place and this can create some cool setups too. So that is the basics of that. Hopefully it's helped you out. You learned something. Uh, if you want to see how to create all a bunch of different setups for the actual spawning of the objects, then let me know and I can go about that. I'll probably also tackle how to set up multiple objects or switching between different objects. So let me know if you're interested in that. But anyways, Thank you guys for watching. Check out the other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about Houdini. I have a bunch of stuff on Houdini as well as Redshift. If you want to learn more about Redshift, then take a look at those as well. I pretty much tackle that inside of Houdini exclusively, but there are a couple of other ones on Cinema 4D, but Redshift should transfer pretty well to other softwares as well if you're using it in different software packages. So anyways, like I said, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.